Today's Namaste Yoga continues our Focus Living series with Focus and Non-Stealing. Welcome to episode 297 of Namaste Yoga. I'm Dr. Melissa West, and today I am here at Clover Point on the Straits of Juan de Fuca, which is the main thoroughfare between Seattle and Vancouver. So we will have lots of uh, fun things happening behind us today, from whale watching boats to lots of airplanes and uh, maybe even lots of seals and if we're lucky whales today behind us so we'll keep our eyes peeled today's class is about uh, one of two things uh, play and sleep so hopefully there'll be lots of play happening behind us today Thank you to Squeeze Yoga Clothing for my clothes. I can do lots of play in my clothes. I'm wearing the long navy leggings today and these are great for playing in. And I'm wearing a really fun, playful scarf today with an octopus on it in one of my favorite colors, which is uh, purple. And I'm wearing a dancing Ganesh bamboo long sleeve top today. So these are really fun, playful clothes and I really enjoy them. And thanks to Dusky Leaf for my props. Today you are going to need a bolster and two blocks and your mat. And we will be starting with the bolster, but first I'm going to share with you a testimonial that I received from Amy via email. So Amy says, oh my, I just started your Focus Living series. Wow, how did you know what I needed right now? Well, the reason why I know what you need right now is because it's autumn here in the Northern Hemisphere and autumn is a time of year when we really do need to take the time to focus our energy. So <laughs> it's sometimes people think I'm psychic, but I'm not really psychic. <laughs> I'm just tuned into the seasons and I listen to all of you too. A lot of you send me emails and tell me what you need and based on what you're saying, I, I've been saving this series for a while. I knew I know that you needed a series on focus. So she said, just a week before I started your series, I realized I needed to stop trying to work on fixing every area of my life at the same time. I need to focus on one thing and work on that wholeheartedly. I feel like I'm trying to multitask my life. And we all know that multitasking really doesn't get more things accomplished. It only scatters our focus and the quality is not there. Thank you so much for your weekly programs. I love that you film outside whenever possible. And I feel like you are a friend in my living room helping me to live a better life, not just physically, but mentally and spiritually too. I can't thank you enough. So thank you so much for sending me your comments and your emails and your posts and wherever you leave them. I received a really beautiful one this week on Instagram and we do respond to your comments when you leave them. We love receiving them and and I know people are always somewhat surprised when they get responses but we it's really important to us that we respond to you and that you get a response because I know there's nothing worse for me when I send a response and when I take the time to give somebody feedback and then it kind of just poof goes into thin air. <laughs> It's, it feels really awful, right? So we do take the time to respond and we want you to know that we hear you. So thank you so much for leaving your comments. It means, it means the world to us. Okay, we are going to start today in one of my favorite, favorite, all-time favorite, oh, did I tell you it's my favorite poses? <laughs> this is often how I start my practice. You know, if I'm feeling really tired and I'm not sure how I'm going to do a practice that day, then this is how I'll start. And I can give you some options too if this is going to work for you and your body. But you can get your bolster. And if you don't have a bolster, you could stack some pillows or fold up a blanket to make it look like this. And we're going to do supported child's pose. So place the bolster between your knees in. <laughs> T 
Tim's giving me permission to not have the sun in my eyes for this. <laughs> okay. And I'm getting all sorts of acupressure from these wonderful rocks here. <laughs> no, they're not warm. <laughs> this is not hot stone massage. Okay, so then you're gonna fold forward over your bolster and turn your head to one side. I'm gonna turn my head to the other side for the, for the mic. And you are going to rest and rest deeply. So let me give you an option if this isn't gonna work for your knees. I can give you a few options or your ankles. One of them could be you can roll up a, a blanket underneath your ankles to fill the space between your ankles. The other one could be you can do the same between your knees here so you can fill a, put, roll a blanket and put it between your knees. And it might be that that's just not working for you in which case you could lie on your back and hug your knees into your chest. Although to make that more restorative, you could cross your arms and let it hang in your hands like more of a sling so that it's more restorative. So we're going to rest here uh, in order to just make it a restorative kind of pose today. I'm just thinking about what's coming later in the class and we need a spot to do legs at the wall. It's not looking like there's any one. <laughs> no, I'm not doing it against that clip. <laughs> okay, so anyway, we'll deal with that when the time comes. But you're gonna rest here and just allow yourself to rest and allow your energy to be restored and nourished. You can breathe into your low back. So breathe in and draw your breath down into your low back. And as you breathe out, focus on your breath staying in that region of your low back. So that you're gathering your energy into your low back. Taking long, slow, deep breaths to store your energy. You can even count your breath here so that you're breathing in for a count of five. And breathing out for a count of six. And keep focusing on your breath in your low back.
And then one more breath like that, just drawing the energy into your lower back. And then from here you can come up from supported child's pose and put your bolster off to your side. Oh, that's a very big, scary looking bug. And we're going to roll down onto your stomach. And you're going to put your arms straight out in front of you. And you're going to bend your right leg in. And reach around and hold on to your ankle if you can reach and your foot if you can't. And if you can't reach still, you can use a strap and hook it onto your foot to help you reach. And actually, if you can reach, hold on to the inside of your foot, that would be good because then it will open up your shoulder and your chest a little bit. And from here, you're going to inhale and exhale and pull your foot away from your buttocks to lift your chest up off the ground so that we're doing a half bow pose it's going to help to prepare us for what's coming when we're standing Great pose to open up your chest, strengthen your back, stretch out the fronts of your legs. Okay, and then you can slowly lower down. And when you lower down, just wiggle your hips from side to side, release your low back. And breathe into your low back. And then on this side, reach around and hold on to your ankle or your foot or if you can the inside arch of your foot and inhale here and exhale pull your heel away from your buttocks and lift your that will lift your chest up off the ground so you're in half bow pose breathe into your chest and the front of your leg And then you can slowly lower down and just take a pause in your belly again and breathe into your low back. Wiggle your hips. felt something on my hand and that bug that I told you about before was a jumping bug so <laughs> I thought it was the bug <laughs> that was back it's like a really rather large beetle that had like pincers on the end that looked like it might bite viciously <laughs> so <laughs> okay but it's I don't see it if it did it jump right back off <laughs> okay <laughs> come up onto all fours and we're gonna come to a seated position where I can be on high alert for bugs. Okay, 
sit in a way that's comfortable for you. I'm going to sit on a meditation cushion. We're going to do a mudra. Okay, here? Like that? Okay. So we're going to do a mudra, and it's pretty simple. You're going to bring your thumb and index finger together. So that part of it's like the Gyan Mudra, which many of you are familiar with. And then the second part of it is you're going to take your middle finger to the middle of your thumb. So your middle finger comes to the middle of your thumb, and then that makes it the Vyana Mudra. And then this is going to rest on your lap with your palms up. Okay, and you're going to sit with your spine straight, your eyes closed, your shoulders over your hips, your ears over your shoulders. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Let it fall out of your mouth. And allow yourself to arrive here now to receive the teachings for today on focus and non-stealing. According to traditional Chinese medicine, we are born with a fixed amount of energy called Jing Qi. As we go about our lives, as we go through our lives, our Jing Qi gets used up. So we're born with a lot of Jing Qi. So that's why when you see children, they have like so much energy. They've, their Jing Qi is all full. <laughs> and then as we get older, our Jing Qi goes down. <laughs> so every day, stressors, uh, and everyday stressors, and then there are some stressors that are harder on us, like, um, you know, the stress of uh, work stress, and then there's the stress of poor nutrition, there's the, there's the stress of things like alcohol, there's the stress of um, relationship stresses, things like that, illnesses, substance abuse. These things use up our Jing Qi at a more rapid rate. And the thing is that it's incredibly difficult to restore your Jing Qi. Basically, Jing Qi just goes down like gas in your gas tank. But you can't go to the gas station and refuel your Jing Qi. It's not like that. It just It's kind of something that just goes down in your life. There are some things you can do like yoga and pranayam and meditation to help preserve your Jing Qi, but I don't want you to think that it's like, oh, my Jing Qi goes down and when I do yoga, it goes up. It's really not like that it basically it's just something that goes down over time in your life so that's the that's the truth of the matter you're born with a certain amount and some people are born with more and some people are born with less less it's kind of like something that comes to you it's not kind of it is something that comes to you from your parents so if your parents if you have good jing chi from your parents then you you've got a great reserve but if you if you at the time of conception, you, your parents were very stressed and they, you know, they didn't have a good energy reserve to pull from, then you probably weren't born with a very good Jing Chi reserve either. <laughs> Tim's laughing. This is no laughing matter, actually, <laughs> if you did not come from a good Jing Chi pool. <laughs> so, um, that's, that's the, that could be a, a not very good news for you today or it could be good news for you today depending on your Jing Qi heritage so this week we're moving into the third yam Ashteya in our focus living series which translates to non-stealing and we live in a culture that encourages us to achieve more acquire more physical possessions and even though uh, we do this many of us still feel impoverished and I'll add to that that in our culture, the, this kind of culture of achieving more and acquiring more, acquiring more, that uses up a lot of our Jing Qi too. This kind of living which asks us to overextend ourselves, to get the shiniest, newest consumer goods, the best job, earn the most money, oh I was getting to this anyway, steals our Jing Qi, the fixed amount of life energy with which we are born. In our culture, we overinvest in material wealth and underinvest in our personal wealth, ourselves, our minds, our bodies, and our spirits. And in essence, we're damaging the vehicle of our soul, the vehicle of our energy that we have to make our, 
our highest contribution on this life plane. One of the most common ways that people damage their bodies, minds, emotions, and spirits is through lack of sleep and lack of play. So make no, no uh, mistake about it. This is a harmful form of stealing that is completely acceptable in our culture. So last week I shared a story with you from my personal life and many of you commented how you were touched and inspired by it. And so I am going to share with you another story from my personal life. Now, I don't want you guys to think that I am all of that and all my stories are uh, peak mountaintop experiences. So today, this, today I'm gonna share with you a story of regret and failure. And I've learned a lot from this experience. However, I'm still recovering from this experience and uh, decades later. And as I looked back on this experience to share with you, I see that it actually started even in my childhood. So, and that's what I'm gonna say now. <laughs> when I look back on it, that this, the habits were sown even in my childhood. I've always been an overachiever all my life, and I've actually come to accept this part of myself as something that, and you guys actually benefit from this every week. <laughs> it works out well for you, let me tell you. <laughs> it means you get a yoga class every week. It means you get, our members get really great content. It means that you get your blog posts answered. It means that you get, it means that you get um, really great content. It, it works out well for a lot of reasons. I work incredibly hard, and I always have my whole life. I did everything I could to excel in school, and uh, as a young child, I, um, I did music. I was a musician. Through grade school, I'd wake up at six in the morning to practice piano before school, and I think this was the beginning of my cutting corners on sleep. Through my undergraduate and master's degrees, I continued to put in long hours on my craft as a musician. I would stay up late studying and then I would get up the next morning early to get my practice room in the university before they filled up at peak practice hours. And then during my PhD, this kind of overachieving really kicked into high gear. This was when I really started to burn the candle at both ends. Uh, I add to that mix a newborn baby at that time and sleep deprivation became a practice and a way of life. I regularly missed out on going out with friends and family so that I could work on my PhD. Now then this became a way of life and it really didn't change after I graduated. I'm here to tell you that my life as a yoga teacher was perhaps the most unbalanced life that I had ever lived. I worked when everybody else was resting and then I didn't rest when everybody else was working. I got up at 6 a.m. to do my yoga practice. I saw clients all day long. I looked after my family, and then I went out in the evenings to teach yoga. When I say the evenings, I, meant, I mean the nighttime, because we lived in a city where people would get home from work, from, and that would be mean commuting in the suburbs, and so I didn't teach yoga until 8 o'clock at night. So I'd get home at 10 p.m., crash on the couch, and try to zone out on some TV for an hour, and then get up and do the next the same thing the next day. So it's not surprising that in 2012, the, the straw man or the house of cards came crashing down as I got one migraine headache that didn't go away. So this physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and energetic breakdown was the beginning of a long process of recovery for me. And I'll never forget this experience. And it was incredibly humbling for me because here I was, somebody who, uh, had a, a, a career in health <laughs> sitting across from my migraine doctor in complete disbelief when uh, my migraine doctor looked at me at point blank and said to me, you don't value your health very much, do you? That was a huge wake up call for me because if I did value my health, I wouldn't have been sitting in that situation in that office at that time. So I, I'm here to hopefully negatively inspire you today because <laughs> um, that was that's an experience I'm still recovering from I you know I have this neurological um, issue now that I live with still every day that I have to deal with every day and I'm here to tell you that we can't steal from our energy reserves and not expect to experience negative consequences 
We live in a culture that tells us that play is trivial, a waste of time and unnecessary. And in our culture, it's easy to push yourself. That's the expectation. The real challenge is to say no and take a nap, or no and go to bed early, or no and play and go to the park with your kids. So this week, we're focused on, on non-stealing, non-stealing from your energy reserves. Ashtaya of play and sleep in your lives. Play is an incredible antidote to stress. Stress steals your creative, inquiring, exploratory parts of your brain. And play allows you to see the possibilities that you might not otherwise have seen. It opens you up to new ideas. Play has positive effects on planning, prioritizing, scheduling, anticipating, delegating, deciding, and analyzing. And play stimulates the part of your brain that is involved in careful, logical reasoning and carefree, unbound exploration. So how do you know what kind of play to add to your life? And it's funny that we have to add this, ask this question, but because we're so focused on work and that's where we've been trained to go, we do have to ask this question. So ask yourself, what did you used to do as a child that you really loved? And how could you recreate that today? When I asked myself this question, I recall spending long hours in, um, my mom had a craft room for us filled with crayons and paints and things like that and I have rekindled that love recently and I I indulge myself in hours of doing art now paints and and glue and scissors and <laughs> washi tape and it feels incredibly indulgent but that time that I do that um, and I'm even taking a mixed media art class now. On It's two and a half hours long. It feels crazy to spend that amount of time. But I come away from that time and my brain is clear. It's, and, there's, and I'm so refreshed and I have space to be able to think again. And it's, it's incredible. Uh, I have friends who love to dance and they're talking about taking a dance class. And these things will fuel you. And it's, you know, think about what you like to do as a child and give yourself permission to do that again. We need to also protect our biggest regenerative and recuperative asset, which is sleep. If you think you can survive on less hours of sleep at, at night, then you are, I'll, I'm here to tell you you're wrong. It's just because you've forgotten what it feels like to be fully rested. So what would it be like to be as strategic with your own self-care, your own restoration, your own recuperation, as you are with your work and your finances. If you don't pace yourself, nurture yourself, and get plenty of sleep, then you will burn out, just like I have. Sleep is necessary to operate at your highest level of contribution. Build more sleep into your schedule, and you will have more energy, creativity and problem-solving abilities. One more hour of sleep will mean several more hours of productivity in your day. So take a deep breath in right now. Let it fall out of your mouth. Maybe lift your jaw if I've shocked you at all today. <laughs> and reflect on the teachings that have been offered today. And just take an honest look at how much Jing Chi you feel like you have left or how much you've stolen from your Jing Chi. If you reflect on how many years you probably have left to live, do you have enough Jing Chi to get you through those years? So how much are you stealing from yourself through lack of play and lack of sleep? And Think about what intention you want to create, sustain, release, let go, or rebirth in your life right now in relation to play or sleep.
And then once you've formed your intention for what you would like to focus on for the rest of this class, what you would like to receive for the rest of this class, then you can start to release the mudra from your hands. And you can start to make your way up to standing. Okay. From standing, we're going to connect with our sense of play with breath of joy to begin with. So the way that breath of joy works is that you inhale, you bring your arms out in front, then you inhale, you bring your arms out to the side. You inhale, you take your arms all the way overhead, and then you bend your knees and you exhale and you fold forward. So if you have any blood pressure issues, high or low blood pressure, it can be a lot to come up and down in this pose. So from the folding forward to the standing up. So you could do this just with the arms from standing. Okay, so let's start. It's three breaths in, inhale, 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 and exhale. Okay, the last one, stay down here for a second. Allow your blood pressure to equalize. And then very, very slowly, you're gonna come up. And then you're going to stand at the front of your mat. And from here, you're going to take a step back with your right foot and have your hips facing the front of your mat sink down through your front left sit bone bring your arms upright take your right arm back and then you're going to lean back i think i'm going to do this with my other arm first because that one's not doing what i need it to do so sink down and then you're going to lean back so we're doing peaceful warrior here and the idea behind this one that I was thinking was uh, with the sleep. So instead of the like the, the incessant need to go, 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 do, 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 achieve, 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 more, 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 with, with both the play and the sleep, I think it's a question of just leaning back and doing a little less. And then let that posture out of your body. Stand at the front of your mat again. And this time you're going to take a step back with your left foot. And sink down through your front right sit bone. Take your arms up, take your left arm back and lean back. So this is a great one to open up the front of your left hip. And it's a nice back bend, which is a good counter pose to rounding over computers and, and tablets and cell phones. And then release this posture from your body. And from here, we're going to do dancer pose because 
dance might be one of the things that you do to uh, play in your life. So you're going to stand on your left foot. You might want to find a chair or a wall to help you balance. This is a great pose to work on balance. You're going to stand on your left foot, hold on to your right ankle or foot or inside edge of your foot if you can. Drop your right knee and you're going to take your left arm up. You're going to inhale here. Exhale, you're going to pull your right heel away from your buttocks until your heel comes behind you and that will open up your chest as well. Okay, and then find a way to let this posture out of your body. And we'll repeat this posture on the other side of your body to find that sense of play. So if you start taking, I love how my friend Anita Goa, she's also a yoga YouTuber. She says, be serious about taking yourself lightly. And I think that's a great one for play and a great one for balancing postures. If you start taking yourself too seriously in a balancing posture too, you're probably gonna fall over. So. Use a chair, use a wall, and uh, you know, just have fun with it. Don't you don't need to worry. If you fall, you fall. It's like no big deal. <laughs> There's nobody grading you here. There's no you're not in a class. You're just at home by yourself. <laughs> you know, when people meet me, it's amazing. They tell me their yoga horror stories. It's I can't believe some of the trauma stories people tell me from actually being in classes. I I. I would do yoga at home all the time too if those things had happened to me. So, so you're at home, you can play, you can follow as much as you want. Nobody's going to reprimand you if you fall over in a pose. <laughs> uh, certainly not me. Okay, so you're going to bend your left leg. You're going to hold on to your ankle, your foot, or the inside of your foot if you can. And take your other arm up or hold on to a chair or a wall. And you're going to pull that heel away from your buttocks to start opening up your chest. Focus on something that's not moving. And let this be an expression of your play and your joy. Okay, and then find a way to let that out of your body. And then we're gonna come down, finally cloud coverage, we have cloud coverage. This is why we came here, we, we believed we were gonna have cloud coverage the whole time, <laughs> which makes for nice lighting. Okay, we're gonna come down and you're gonna come to a wall and I'm gonna pretend I have a wall and I'm gonna show you what you can do if you don't have a wall. Okay, so we're going to do legs up the wall And you're going to come to, imagine there's a wall right here. So there's a really pre pretty piece of sea glass that's purple, just like my scarf. And there's a, there's a girl who does my classes who lives here, who uh, collects sea glass. That would be a really pretty, pretty color for her. She's on, she's on Instagram, too. Her account is all about sea glass. <laughs> Well, every time I'm on the beach doing yoga, I think about her because I see the sea glass and I think of her. Okay, and um, 
Okay, so you're against the wall and you're gonna do your legs up. So you get your hip right against the wall and then you come down and you swiggle your hips up and your legs up. So your legs are pretty much flush with the wall. Okay, if you have any back issues, it's probably gonna bother your back to have your legs straight. So you're gonna put your legs on a chair so your knees are bent. Okay, and if you have any back problems, you're going to need to place your knee, bend your knees and not use the wall. Instead, you're gonna have your legs on a chair so that it doesn't aggravate your, ba your back. So straight legs will aggravate your back. And then if you don't have a wall like me, then what you're going to do is use your block, or you may be able to use your bolster, but it's probably a little easier to use your block. And you're going to press into your feet, place the block underneath your pelvis, and then you can take your legs into the air and you'll be able to have your legs in the air like this. And they'll just float up there without any effort. And then we all have some kind of version of legs up the wall. And this is a restorative pose. It helps to restore your energy. And just like we did at the beginning, we are going to focus on breathing into the areas of our kidneys and our adrenals to help to restore Jing Chi. And so you're going to breathe into your low back. And as you exhale, you're going to focus on that energy pooling into that area like a lake getting wider and deeper. So breathe in for a count of five. Breathe out for a count of six. Breathe in for a count of five. And breathe out for a count of six. And then to come down from legs up the wall, you're gonna bend your knees and roll to your right side. And if you're on a block, you're gonna press in your feet and come off. And we're going to come onto your stomach now. Okay, so come onto your stomach. And you, can, you might want to have your bolster close by because I'm going to show you an option that's really nice for your bolster with this one. So I'm going to have my bolster close by. This is a really good one to nourish your adrenals and your kidneys. So it will help to, uh, help to nurture your energy, to nourish your energy, which we're thinking about today, I think. So it's, it's um, sphinx pose. So take your arms straight in front of you and lie on your belly. 
press into the front of your pelvis and lengthen out your low back. And we can make some more space at the front of our hips by tucking your toes under. Do one at a time and then you can lift your left knee and reach out through your left ankle. That'll create some space. And then do that on your right leg as well. Lift your right knee and press through your right heel. That'll create some space there. And then you're going to start to walk your elbows back until they come underneath your shoulders. And here you want to feel some pressure on your low back. So some compression on your low back. Not any sharp shooting pain or uh, it's just you want to feel that uh, pressure in your low back. So that's cool, but you don't want to feel any sharpness or stabbing pain or anything like that. Okay, so that's what you want to feel. And that's stimulating your kidneys and your adrenals. So when we were talking about the Jing Chi, that's going to help to nourish, nourish your energy there. So uh, this is a great position here. It's also really nice to use your bolster in this position. And this is, I really appreciate when Dusky Leaf started making bolsters, they worked with me. They really wanted to know my input on what I was looking for in a bolster. And my biggest pet peeve with bolsters, well there was a few <laughs> with bolsters, was that they lose their shape over time. And this one's really great because it holds its shape. That was one of the things that I really wanted to make sure was that it held its round shape. And this one, the round ones really do. And the flat ones stay flat because <laughs> you want the round ones to stay round, the flat ones to stay flat. And uh, the other thing about them is they have handles on both sides because whenever you go to reach for them, it seems like the ones with one handle the handle side's always facing away from you <laughs> anyway. So that, that, those were my two requests for bolsters. Anyway, so this is really nice because it can help to uh, lift and hold you in position so you don't have to be pressing into your elbows the whole time. Nice position for, um, for supported sphinx. And the other thing is if you have any neck injuries, you can also press your, you can also hold your chin in your hands so depends on what works best for you and your body if that really brings your neck way far forward more far forward than it is then um then and then you're coming into a rounded position more so than you already are then i i don't think that's necessarily a good thing but if it kind of meets you where you are then then it is a good thing but uh, so for example in my body i had to really bring my head far forward so that's that's not really working for me anymore that uh assist because then my ears aren't over my shoulders anymore. So see what works for you in your body and come into that position. Remember, we're feeling this in our low back. That's where we wanna feel it and breathe. And we're gonna breathe those long, slow, deep breaths again into our low back, just like we have been. So you're gonna breathe in for four counts and out for five. In for four. And out for And when your mind wanders, come back to that breath. Breathe in for four counts, for five counts. Breathe out for six.
And then you can release this posture from your body and you're going to come and lie on your back now. And on your back, we're going to finish our class with two recline postures because uh, we're thinking about uh, twists and uh, we're thinking about sleep. So I thought we would finish our class recline rather than seated. So you're going to need a block for this. And I'm going to push these props off to the side a bit so we have room on either side of you. You're going to lie down with your arms out to the side in a soft T position. Your block between your knees and you're going to press into your feet and take your hips over to the right side of your mat and then lower your knees over to the left side of your mat. So we're in recline twist. And then you can look over your right shoulder. And then you're going to come back to the center, press into your feet, untuck your hips, take a deep breath in, let it fall out of your mouth. And then we're going to do that same twist on the other side. So press into your feet, lift your hips and take them over to the left side of your mat. Bring your knees up and over to the right side of your mat and look over your left shoulder. Breathe into your belly and focus on your breath out. Then come back to the center. You're going to bring your knees in, press into your feet, untuck your hips. And from here, you're going to lie on your back. Just take a breath here, allow your spine to unravel. And for a forward fold to finish, you're going to hug your knees into your chest. So if you don't have any knee issues, you can hug your knees into your chest like this. If you do, you're going to hold on behind your knees. Great pose to stretch out your low back here to finish.
You can take one more deep breath here in this pose. And then you're going to take Shavasana. And for this, you're going to, since you have your bolster close by, you can take your bolster and place it underneath your knees. So that can just allow for a nice flow of energy when you place it underneath your knees. And also, if you have any back problems, then just taking a nice little bend in your knees there will alleviate any back discomfort. So that's a nice way to do Shavasana with your bolster underneath your knees, with your palms up beside you. And you can stay here for Shavasana to allow yourself to receive the class, to integrate the class. And I'm going to sit up and read a poem to you now. And I've written down that we're going to do the Loka chant today too, so I don't forget. Too bad that I can't hear you when we do classes. I think it's only going to be a matter of time before we're able to do these classes live, though. The technology is going to be available for us to be able to film these three, what, three years? No. Oh, we're going to film episode 300 live, yeah. But I think for us to do it weekly would be... Hmm? Yeah, not outdoors yet. Oh my God, not unless we had way bigger budget. <laughs> Our data plans don't allow for that. <laughs> oh my gosh, how much would that cost us to do that every week, too? Too much. <laughs> Okay, so this poem is by St. Teresa of Avila, and she lived from 1512 to 1583, and she was one of the most influential female saints in the Western world. She was a real, uh, at look her up, she was quite the lady. <laughs> This comes from one of my favorite books of poetry called Love Poems from God. It's a book of irreverent poetry. Great book of poetry. And it's called Your Playmates. I was born for you. What do you want of me, dear? Look at all that has come from your wish, the forest, the streams, the mountains. Are these not your playmates? Do we give you comfort in eternity? We were born for you. Don't be shy, beloved. Just tell us what you want, but in a language that makes us smile. So gradually allow your breath to deepen. Begin to wiggle and stretch out. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and then slowly bend your knees. And roll to your right side. And slowly make your way up to seated. And from seated, we will finish our practice with the Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Mantra. And this allows us to gather the fruits of our practice in so that we can bring them into ourselves first and then we can offer them out into the world for the benefit of all beings. So turn your uh, right palm up, left palm down. And then you're going to make space with breath and a sigh. 
Loka samasta sukino pavantu. Loka samasta sukino pavantu. Loka samasta sukino pavantu. May all beings be happy and free, and may the thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute in some way to the happiness and freedom for all. So thank you so much for joining us for episode 297 of Namaste Yoga. If you like today's show, please press that like button. And if you're new to Namaste Yoga, then subscribe to our channel so that you can receive Namaste Yoga when it comes out every Friday. We put out a new show every single Friday. And if you know somebody who would enjoy this class, then be sure to share it with them, maybe a friend or a coworker or a family member. I know a lot of um, family members that do the class together and friends that do the class together. And that's a really fun thing to do. It's, it's really cool because we have this technology where we can do classes together, right? People FaceTime each other and do the classes together. And, or they just do it together and then they talk about it together later. That's fun too. And if you've received value from this class, then you can always make a donation here. We appreciate that very much. Hey, maybe if we get enough donations, then we can start using our data to, to film this class live every week. <laughs> that could be a goal. <laughs> we could figure out what it would cost <laughs> to data-wise every week. <laughs> I think that would be a crazy amount. <laughs> but <laughs> something we could work towards. But I definitely think... As far as seeing where this show goes in the future, I think, um, I mean, as far as what I can see, what technology is going to allow in the future, there's sort of as far as my brain can see, and that's as far as my brain can see right now, is that we'll be able to go uh, live with the shows and that uh, we'll be able to start to, it'll be almost like you'll be able to come to the class. I think that's sort of the next step that I can see that will, will definitely be happening. You think five years for that? Nah. I think we, mm -hmm. I think we underestimate what can happen in the next five years and overestimate what will happen the next year. So I probably think it's going to happen in the next year and you think it's going to happen in the next five and it'll probably happen somewhere in between the two. <laughs> Okay, so uh, you can also contribute to the show by leaving your comments because that helps other people just like you find us. So today's question for the comments is, will you make more time for sleep this week? Are you going to take an extra hour of sleep? Maybe take a nap? Let us know in the comments. And how will you, how will you make time for play this week? What, how will you play this week? We want to know what you're going to do to play. So today we focused on play and sleep in our class and we have a whole series on insomnia in our membership community. Sometimes our sleep is so out of whack we need help getting it back into uh, alignment and we have a whole series on that in our membership site called Yoga for Insomnia and that series is epic. It leaves nothing to chance. We have yoga, we have breath practice, we have guidelines for eating, cooking classes, tips for getting the best night's sleep possible. It's all in there. There are two one-hour yoga classes, one for the morning designed to discharge anxious energy, one for the evening to wind you down. I just did that class the other day and I was like, wow, this is a really great class. <laughs> There's a yoga nidra at the end. It's quite restorative. I really liked it. Uh, there are two pranayama practices, breath practices that will help you, one to help you sleep before you, you go to bed and then there's one that will help you if you're lying awake at night, which is great because there's two problems. I can't fall asleep and then I wake up and I can't get back to sleep. So there's breath practices for each of those. There's eating guidelines and cooking classes for every meal of the day that will help with your sleeping. And then there's even a lecture going over insomnia and offering tips and suggestions on how to get the best night's sleep possible. So I'll link to that in the show notes below in case you are already a member. And then if you would like to become a member, you can click here uh, to become a member. Today, we'd love to welcome you into our community. So I'm sending you much love from beautiful British Columbia. May your joy be as deep as our Pacific Ocean like the Straits of Juan de Fuca behind us. May you be as strong as our mountains and may you be as rooted as the trees in our forest. Om Shanti Namaste. Melissa would love to hear your questions and thoughts. Please leave your comments below the video. Thank you for your reviews on iTunes and YouTube. 
Your reviews help us to share yoga and a yoga lifestyle with others around the world. If you have a question for Melissa, you can leave a voice message at melissawest.com and Melissa may answer it in an upcoming blog.